C Sharp. C Sharp was created by Microsoft in 2000 as part of the .NET framework. It was designed by Anders Heilsberg, who also created Turbo Pascal and Delphi. The language was built to compete with Java and provide a modern object-oriented programming language for Windows development. C Sharp, not C Hashtag, by the way. What makes C Sharp special is its tight integration with the Microsoft ecosystem. It's the go-to language for building Windows desktop applications, and it's also the primary language for Unity game development, which powers games like Genshin Impact, Hollow Knight, and Among Us. C Sharp also works great for web development through ASP.NET and mobile apps with Xamarin. The language has strong typing, automatic memory management through garbage collection, and supports both object-oriented and functional programming. But C Sharp has downsides, too. It's heavily tied to Microsoft, which means you're often locked into their ecosystem and tools like Visual Studio. While Visual Studio is powerful, it can be resource-heavy and slow on older machines. Swift Swift was created by Apple in 2014 as a replacement for Objective-C, which was Apple's primary programming language for decades. Swift was designed to be faster, safer, and more modern. What makes Swift special is its focus on safety and performance. Swift eliminates entire categories of bugs by using features like optionals, which force developers to handle nil values explicitly. It's also extremely fast, in many cases matching C++ in performance. Swift is the primary language for building iOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS apps. Apps like Airbnb, LinkedIn, and Lyft have adopted Swift. However, Swift has major limitations. It's completely tied to Apple's ecosystem. While Swift is technically open source, it's primarily useful only for Apple platform development. This means the job market is limited compared to languages like JavaScript or Python. Swift also changes frequently. Apple has made breaking changes between versions, which means code written in older versions often needs significant updates. Go. Go, also called Golang, was created by Google in 2009 by Robert Griesmer, Rob Pike, and Ken Thompson, who also co-created Unix. The language was designed to address frustrations with existing languages, particularly around slow compilation times and difficulty writing concurrent programs. What makes Go special is its simplicity and performance. Go has a minimalist design with only 25 keywords compared to over 80 in languages like C++. Go compiles directly to machine code, so it's extremely fast, and it has built-in support for concurrency through Go routines. Companies like Google, Docker, Kubernetes, Uber, and Netflix use Go extensively for back-end services and infrastructure tools. However, Go has controversial design decisions. It lacked generics until very recently, which meant developers had to write repetitive code. Go also has a very opinionated approach to error handling, requiring explicit error checking, which many developers find tedious. Kotlin. Kotlin was created by JetBrains, the company behind IntelliJ IDEA, and was first released in 2011. It was designed as a better alternative to Java while maintaining full interoperability with existing Java code. In 2017, Google announced Kotlin as an official language for Android development, and in 2019, they declared it the preferred language for Android. What makes Kotlin special is that it's essentially a modernized Java. It runs on the Java virtual machine and can use all existing existing Java libraries but with much cleaner syntax. Kotlin has null safety built into the type system, which eliminates the dreaded null pointer exception that plagues Java developers. Companies like Google, Netflix, Trello, and Coursera use Kotlin, and it's become the dominant language for Android development. However, Kotlin has drawbacks. The compilation speed is slower than Java, which can be frustrating during development. While Kotlin is great for Android development, its adoption outside of Android is limited. Also, because Kotlin runs on the JVM, it inherits some of Java's characteristics like higher memory usage compared to native languages. TypeScript TypeScript was created by Microsoft in 2012 and was led by Anders Heilsberg, the same person who created C Sharp. TypeScript isn't a completely new language. Instead, it's a superset of JavaScript that adds optional static typing. What makes TypeScript popular is that it solves many of JavaScript's biggest problems. JavaScript is dynamically typed, which can lead to bugs that only appear at runtime. TypeScript adds type checking, so you catch errors during development rather than in production. 
Companies like Microsoft, Google, Airbnb, and Slack all use TypeScript heavily. It compiles down to regular JavaScript, so it works anywhere JavaScript works. But TypeScript has downsides as well. It adds complexity to your project. You need to set up a build process and configure the TypeScript compiler, which can be overwhelming for beginners. Also, TypeScript doesn't eliminate JavaScript's quirks. It just adds a layer on top, so you still need to understand JavaScript thoroughly. Ruby. Ruby was created in the mid-1990s by Yukihiro Matsumoto, a Japanese programmer who wanted to design a language that was fun and productive to use. What made Ruby famous was Ruby on Rails, a web development framework released in 2004 that revolutionized how people built web applications. Rails made it incredibly easy to create websites quickly, which is why companies like GitHub, Shopify, Airbnb, and Basecamp were all built with Ruby on Rails. Ruby has a beautiful syntax that reads almost like English. It emphasizes convention over configuration, which means you spend less time on setup and more time writing actual code. But Ruby has serious downsides. Performance is the biggest issue. Ruby is one of the slowest mainstream programming languages, especially compared to compiled languages. This is why Twitter famously moved away from Ruby, as it couldn't handle their scaling needs. Ruby's popularity has also declined significantly in recent years, as newer frameworks like Node.js, Django, and Laravel have taken away much of Ruby's market share, PHP. PHP stands for Hypertext Preprocessor, and it was created in 1994 by Rasmus Lerdorf. Originally, it was just a set of tools for tracking visits to his online resume, but it evolved into a full programming language designed specifically for web development. What makes PHP special is that it powers a massive portion of the internet. WordPress, which runs over 40% of all websites, is built with PHP. Other major platforms like Facebook, originally, Drupal, and Magento also use PHP. This is because PHP is extremely easy to deploy. Almost every web hosting provider supports it out of the box. However, PHP has a bad reputation among developers. It's often criticized for inconsistent function naming, poor design decisions, and security vulnerabilities, especially in older versions. Many developers see PHP as outdated and messy compared to modern languages. Also, PHP is essentially locked into web development. You can't really use it for mobile apps, desktop software, or data science like you can with Python or JavaScript. Lua Lua was created in 1993 by Brazilian computer scientists at the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro. The name Lua means moon in Portuguese, and it was designed to be lightweight, fast, and easy to embed into other applications. The entire Lua interpreter is only about 300 kilobytes, which is incredibly small. What makes Lua stand out is its popularity in game development. It's used as a scripting language in massive games like World of Warcraft, Roblox, and Angry Birds. Game developers love Lua because it's easy to embed, allowing non-programmers to write game logic without touching the core engine code. Lua is also extremely fast thanks to Lua JIT, one of the fastest dynamic language implementations in the world. However, Lua has weaknesses. It's not a general-purpose language, so you won't find many people building full applications with it. The standard library is minimal, which means you often need third-party libraries. Also, Lua's indexing starts at 1 instead of 0, which confuses programmers coming from other languages. Yo kitties! If you haven't watched part 1, click this video.